Welcome in. Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show, we have the latest Seattle Seahawks news and rumors as we'll begin talking about D. Eskridge in a few moments. Also, the Athletic had an idea for what the Seahawks should do with D. Eskridge. We'll dive into that. Also, we have uh, some thoughts uh, when it comes to potential free agent targets at the offensive tackle position and a roster update to get to in a matter of moments. Before we do, folks, we are right on the verge of 38,000 subscribers here on the channel, just about 20 away from getting there. We need your help to reach that next milestone. I believe that we can do it off of this video right here. Subscribe for free today, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. We have our live shows on Wednesdays. We do watch parties on game days. Daily news and rumors segments. If you're a diehard Seahawks fan, this is the channel for you. Subscribe for free today, and you'll be glad you did. Let's start with uh, the Athletics' Mike Jones, suggesting that Seattle could be cutting D. Eskridge. Now, we've talked about this possibility on the channel before, but it seems like this could really be a reality for the Seahawks because they are depending on D. Eskridge to finally developed, come into his own, but he hasn't really shown much throughout his career to this point. He's dealt with some injuries and a few different things, but can he emerge in camp even after you brought in Jackson Smith and Jigba? Here's what Mike Jones from The Athletics said. Eskridge, a 2021 second-round pick, was supposed to team with Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf and give the Seahawks a strong trio of pass catchers. But in two seasons, Eskridge only has 17 catches, for 122 yards in one touchdown. He needs a strong off-season showing, or the Seahawks could be ready to move on after drafting Ohio State wideout Jackson Smith and Jigba at number 20 in April. Now, Jonathan Adams of Heavy.com elaborated on what Mike Jones had to say and what the Jackson Smith and Jigba situation also means for this. Let's tell you what, uh, what he had to say. The selection of Smith and Jigba shows the Seahawks have lost faith in Eskridge as a solution to be the team's third wideout. Yes, Eskridge could still be a valuable rotational player if the Seahawks receiver can stay on the field. The pressure is clearly on D. Eskridge at this point to have an impact on this team, and there's no excuses, okay? And the impact can be in a couple of different ways. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that he's going to be the number three receiver because obviously you brought in Jackson Smith and Jigman now. But whether it's as a number four or five or a special team performer, whatever it may be, D. Eskritz has got to fi figure it out. One way or the other, and if he doesn't figure out by the time training camp ends, he won't have a roster spot. I know he doesn't cost Seattle that much, but pressure is on to do something. D. Eskridge, former second-round pick uh, out of Western Michigan back in 2021. He's played in 20 games in the last two seasons. That's it. Career stats, not anything to write home about. 17 receptions, 122 yards, and one touchdown. You look at the Seahawks wide receiver depth chart at this point, you can see there's a lot of guys competing for those roster spots with Metcalf, Lockett, Smith & Jigba, and Young leading the way is your top four receivers. But D. Eskridge, K. Johnson, uh, Landers, Thompson. I mean, we've even talked about Jake Bobo a decent amount, who the uh, Seahawks brought in as a UDFA. There's a number of guys competing for this spot, these spots, and nothing is guaranteed at this point for D. Eskridge. He's got his work cut out for him to make this team, even though it wouldn't save them a whole lot of money to cut him it would save that roster spot for somebody else, whether that's another receiver or if they want to use it in another position. So we'll see if D makes it or not. Should the Seahawks cut D. Eskridge? What do you think? This is our pin comment today. You might get an ad break if so. Take advantage of it. Why for yes, in for no. Should the Seahawks cut D. Eskridge or not? Let me know what you think. Why for yes, in for no. All right. Uh, Bleacher Report is suggesting the Seahawks still need to sign a backup swing tackle. And... You may be saying to yourself, well, don't the Seahawks already have a couple different options? Who's available out there? Well, the answers to both those things would be yes. Here's more from uh, David Kenyon of Bleacher Report on this uh, possibility. Uh, David Kenyon says, Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas give Seattle a couple of promising young starting tackles. Still, the Seahawks should focus on improving the reserve group. They may believe in Stone, Forsyth, 
and Jake uh, Curhan, but that's an uncomfortable view from the outside. And it is. I, I can understand where they may be coming from, of David's talking about, of these guys that may not be up to snuff uh, to the rest of the world out there of being dependable when there is potentially better options with more experience for those roles. So you can see exactly where they're coming from of that idea. More on that, I'm going to show you some other options for that offensive tackle spot in a second. But first, we are selling hats uh, on sale now, whether it's the draft hats uh, or some of the other items that uh, you can find out there. And they are on sale to you. Uh, a lot of different options out there. Chatsports.com slash Seagulux Draft is where you can find those. Uh, we also have some beanies and other things on sale now. Uh, get a hat now because, folks, it's getting hot outside. You want to wear a hat. Certainly, you know, enjoy yourself and be rocking for summertime, representing your favorite team, too. Get yours now. Chatsports.com slash Seagulux Draft is where you can find some draft hats and more. Uh, start getting yours today. Now, I like the idea of signing another offensive tackle, and it wouldn't cost you a whole lot either as far as I'm concerned with some of the potential options that are out there to be that backup swing tackle because if something happened to Charles Cross or Abraham Lucas, then you want to feel comfortable that Geno Smith is going to be protected and hopefully the offense would not miss a beat of some sorts. And you look at some of the free agent options out there, there's still some good ones. Uh, Taylor Lewan, who has had a very good career with the Tennessee Titans. George Fant, who Seahawks fans are familiar with. Brandon Shell as well. Jawan James is available out there, most recently with the uh, Baltimore Ravens. And then Dennis Kelly, uh, also out there as well. All these guys have had significant playing time, playing at a high level, and I think you would be fine with them being your backup tackle and being prepared in case something does happen or at least giving – uh, one of your starters, a break of some sort. So, who is a player the Seahawks should sign? Uh, whether it's at the offensive tackle spot or another position. Let us know in the comments section who you think the Seahawks should sign and tell us uh, who you think would be a good fit and let me know. All right, last item on today's show. E.J. Perry uh, previously played for the Texans and the Jaguars. He has been worked out by Seattle as a potential quarterback signing. Now, you look at the Seahawks, obviously Geno Smith and Drew Locke are going to be your guys leading the way as your number one and number two quarterbacks. But the NFL this week approved a measure that allows you to have an emergency third quarterback if your first two quarterbacks were to go down and be unavailable. So now if you're Seattle, all of a sudden things change where, you know, we, we saw with San Francisco last year, they had a couple different quarterbacks go down. And so... You know, with that, you have to start thinking about if the worst of the worst happened and be prepared for those circumstances. And so, E.J. Perry, not a whole lot of starting experience uh, or, or playing experience, rather, in the NFL for that matter. Could he be the guy, potentially? He, is, he has been looked at, got the workout. Here's more from Jordan Schultz, uh, what he had to say. Former Texans and Jaguars quarterback E.J. Perry worked out for the Seahawks. Sources tell the score. Perry was a two-time All-Ivy League performer. At Brown and was the offensive MVP at the Shrine Bowl. He also had the top athleticism test score out of any quarterback at the Combine uh, that last year. More on E.J. Perry. Let's tell you about him. Um, undrafted in 2020. Played for Brown uh, University and also at Boston College. That's where he began his career with uh, B.C. before moving on to Brown after that. His time at Brown, uh, two-time first-team All-Ivy League in 2019 and 2021. The Ivy League, remember, they did not play collegiate football the 2020 COVID year. So he may have had a chance to be a three-time first-teamer if uh, he would have had that COVID year back. Last year with the Jags and the Texans, but still hanging around looking for another chance of some sorts. We'll see if it ultimately ends up with the uh, Seattle Seahawks or not. Grade the Seahawks roster. What do you think of where things stand Right now with this group, still trying to edge some things out and trying to fine-tune it before the season begins. What do you think where things are at right now? How would you grade the roster? Let me know, A, B, C, D, or F, in the comment section below. Interact with me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Tyler Jones Live. You can find me there talking about your Seattle Seahawks, and I shall see you next time right here on Seahawks.